Hello, hello, Liverpool. How we feeling? Okay, see, this is only the second panel of the day, but I know we can do better than that. It's Sunday fun day here in Liverpool. I'll ask you again, how we feeling? There we go. We are so thrilled to have the cast of the originals coming out here to answer some of your questions and mine. So without further ado, please welcome ladies first. Please welcome Summer Fontana. And please welcome Steven Kruger. This land is your land. Yeah. Welcome, this guys. Welcome to land. Liverpool. Give a round of applause to the originals. From California. So great to have you guys here. I'll have a few questions of my own, and then we're going to invite all of you to engage with us. We have microphones here, number one, number two, and at the top we have number three and number four, so don't be shy. Get those questions ready. But Summer and Steven, first of all, how are you enjoying beautiful Liverpool so far? Liverpool is an amazing city. I just want to say that, and this is why I do my job, because I love traveling, and I love seeing people, and it's the best thing ever. I mean, people here know how to drink. I, I uh, yeah, yeah. We went out and had a few drinks last night. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how you guys do it. Um, but no, it's been, it's been great. Uh, this is my, this is my first big Comic Con, and um, you guys have all been so lovely. And apologies that Riley isn't here to join us. I encourage all of you to uh, go on Twitter and yell at her for not being here. Just make her feel like really, really bad for not showing up. She said something about like hating the UK. Wow. And, you know, you wow. know, didn't you know, like any yeah. of you guys. It was, I don't. Like her. I, I'm here and Summer's here, so it's really all that matters. She said yeah. it sounds like her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds just like Riley. Really mean. Classic Riley. Yeah, exactly. Love it. So we have your permission to go on Twitter and say absolutely, all that. Okay. please. Yeah. Just between friends here. We should make a hashtag. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, I like we'll it. Have to come up with a hashtag. It's trending now. A yeah. hashtag, Yellow Riley. Yeah. yeah. And how's the Comic Con been for you, Summer? So far, so good. You having fun? Yes, I love meeting the people here. It's super fun. My wrist is still holding up by all the autographs. It's going great. Well, we had the cast of the Vampire Diaries here, so I'm going to ask a question that I asked to them. Was this sort of the, the fantasy genre? Was it something that you were a fan of before you were cast in the originals? I'll go to you first, Stephen. Um, no, I mean to be totally honest, fantasy, it, it, like the fantasy supernatural stuff, isn't really my my natural forte. Um, I saw Lord of the Rings and fell asleep like three times. <laughs> um, I, I get why people love it, and it's amazing. But then once I got this show. And I started to, you know, I, I got the originals and I thought, well, I should probably go back and watch Vampire Diaries a little bit. Um, I thought I would watch like two episodes just so I kind of knew what was going on. And I watched four seasons um, because it's actually good. <laughs> it's really good. Um, it's actually good. It is. It's I mean, you know, decent. who knew? I like, you know, I had no idea. I had heard of Vampire Diaries and um, I just figured out, oh, you know, it's like vampires. Well, I guess I'm going to be on the show. I, I guess I'm, well, yeah, I might know. as well like figure out what's going on. But it's a I mean, good, it's like I mean, it's good stuff. And, um, um, and I think once I got into it and kind of started to understand some of the, the lore and the legend behind it, um, and then, you know, it's easy to look at Ian Somerhalder and Paul Wesley on screen as well. And, it really is. You know, what are you going to do? Um, but no, I, I think once I got into this show, it became much more apparent to me that this is such a fun genre. Um, and then also, one of the added bonuses, of course, is we get to come and do stuff like this. Like, this doesn't really exist for, you know, other genres of shows. So you get to all the supernatural stuff and the fantasy stuff, and you get rabid fans like yourselves who, you know, remember things that I don't even remember from the show, um, which is so impressive, by the way. And, and so, yeah, it's like a whole, new, it's a whole new world, and I'm so glad that I've kind of gone down this rabbit hole now. Yeah. Yeah. It must have been great if you binge-watched four seasons. I, yeah. d I mean, in like a weekend. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's it was very, time. it was very strange. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, of course, you know, went and watched the originals as well once that was done. Uh -huh. Yeah. And how about you? Was the genre something that you were interested in before you were cast in the originals? Well, I had just turned seven years old, so I just got out of the Dora era. Do you remember being on the show? I, I you know, I had a faint memory of it. Um, <laughs> that and, you know, my first walking, yeah, it's, it's all up there somewhere, all jammed up. So, not really. I did not really get into the genre at first, and... I just kind of picked up stuff along the way, to be honest. Like, I just, like, read the script, and I'd see people filming stuff. I'm like, oh, 
that that makes sense now. So yeah, no, no, never been into that genre because I was way too young to even start it. But uh, now I know a lot more about it and I love it. So. Well, talk me through the audition process. I'll go with you first because starting so young, what was the audition process like for you? So basically, I got an audition notice from my agent at the time, People Store Agency, and I realized that this was a really big deal, and I didn't know that at first. And I went into the audition, and my character name was different than it was in the real show. It wasn't Hope. It was a different script, different everything. And I thought, oh yeah, this makes sense. Uh, I'll be playing blah, blah, blah. And I didn't realize that when I got the call back and another call back and then got the show that I was going to be playing a completely different character. So how I found out that I got it is I pulled into, I just got done with an acting class. <laughs> it's really funny. And uh, I went to this restaurant in my hometown. I'm trying to think what it was. It was some kind of fast food place. Uh, Chick-fil-A. That's what it was. Chick-fil-A. Because yeah. I love their chicken sandwiches. Um, and my mom was like, oh, by the way, Summer, you're Hope. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm Hope. Yeah, I know you love me, but like, I'm actually Hope. Um, and then she was like, no, you got the role of Hope in the originals. And I'm like, I almost cried. That was like the most amazing thing for a seven-year-old to hear. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what was it like for you being cast? Um, I turned it down a couple times, actually. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> in retrospect, I had no business turning it down at all. Um, but I think I, so, so as all of you know, um, Josh is a, a gay character. And when I first read the description of the character, the way it was written, and I think this was just in my own head, it sounded like they wanted, um, you know, a kind of a stereotype of a, of a gay character. And this was this was also going to be one of the first gay characters in in the Vampire Diaries kind of universe, um, and something about it just the way it was the way it was written and the way they described the character at first put this image in my head, and I thought, you know what, I, I'm not the best person to play this role, um, and so I yeah a couple times the audition came in and I said no thank you, um, and and finally they called and they said hey you're you're misinterpreting what this character is we want him to be you know a very normal guy this is going to be a three dimensional character. His sexuality just happens to be one piece of his character, and he's just kind of a normal college guy. And I said, okay, um, you know, I messed, I messed that up. Um, and so went in, did the audition, um, and I, I had also read for, I think I had read for a, a part in the, in the pilot of the originals um, and didn't get it. So, so Julie Plyke already knew who I was, and, um, and once I got this, the funny thing is I was supposed to do... Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but Josh was supposed to die after three episodes. Um, it was initially a, a three-episode arc, and you know they were going to find. I think the story goes they were going to find a, a my head in a box or something like that. You know, Klaus had figured out that I was kind of working as a double agent, and he killed me and delivered my head to Marcel in a box. That was the initial plan. Um, and then it was just one of those kind of like magical Hollywood things where you show up and, and it just kind of clicked and it worked. Um, and Danielle Campbell, who, uh, who played Davina, um, her and I got along really, really well. And, you know, we just had some, some fun banter. And I think that the at the time, the show was also missing a little bit of that lighter comedic element, um, which Josh kind of brought to the table. And, and I realized very quickly that, that I could kind of just make this role whatever I wanted it to be, you know? So I brought a lot of my own personality to it and I think they kind of started to catch on and started writing a little bit more for me. And um, it just kind of evolved. And I swear, through the first like two seasons, it was like every episode I was like flipping through the script to see if I died. I mean, I, I really thought, I was, I, every episode I was like, surely I'm dead by now. Uh, oh, there it is, there's <laughs> there the it is. I'm like, where, I'm like, where is it, where is it? And it never, it just never happened and it just kind of turned into this, you know, the, the whole run of the show. Um, until, of course, I did die at the, at the very end, um, at which point Julie pulled me aside and said, hey, you're finally going to die in a few episodes. So um, that was a little bittersweet, but I think Josh had a pretty good ending. But anyway, yeah, that was, the, that was the genesis of it. I'm very glad that I somebody talked me into doing this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd probably be some much more boring person sitting here <laughs> in my place. <laughs> I think I speak for all of us when I say we're glad that you accepted the role and that your head did not end up in that box. Yeah, same. That deserves a round of applause, I think, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, for sure. Well, we have to talk about social media a bit because I've been lightly stalking you guys, and I will start with you, Summer. You're very active on social media. Have you found that it's very helpful for your career or a bit tedious? How, how do you view social media? 
Well, I enjoy it. I definitely do not make it my idol because I have many more things in my life that obviously I love interacting with my fans, but you know, I have school, I have my friends, I have a life outside of my acting career. So yeah, I think uh, social media is a really great way to connect with people and see how they're doing, check up on them. And you know, I'm getting pretty good positive feedback, so I just keep doing it. Um, hope you're not sick of me yet. And uh, yeah, it's just a really great way to connect with them and say hi and also involve them. I've been doing more lives on like world topics, world issues. So for example, with school, since I'm homeschooled, I have the freedom of doing any project that I really want to. So for example, I just did a project on climate change and I uh, interviewed an environmental science major I was found on Instagram. It was like, wow, that's great. So yeah, um, definitely not using you guys to help me with school, but it was just a really great way to uh, connect with people and share my story. That's great. And you're using your platform for good, which is great. And that deserves another round of applause, I will say. And high five for the yeah. homeschool kid. I was homeschool kid as well. Uh, Steven, how do you view social media? So far? Oh, man, don't get me started. This was a bad question to ask me. <laughs> uh -oh. um, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get preachy. Um, I hate social media. I, I, um, I think that, I, so, I mean, for those of you who have seen my social media, there's not a lot on it. Um, I have Twitter, which I, which I actually enjoy. I use Twitter as kind of as like a news feed. Um, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of good information you can get. Actually, the best part of Twitter is you're always the first to know when there's an earthquake in Los Angeles. Um, I mean, literally, if you like feel like a little shake or a vibration in your house and you're not sure if it was like construction from across the street or an earthquake, just pop on Twitter, and then you'll see like eight people like earthquake, earthquake. So the world you know, ending yeah. is the world ending. Yeah, then you know, like literally, it's like my favorite use of Twitter. Um, but yeah, I think Twitter is great for a news feed, and I and I love connecting with fans on Twitter as well. Um, Instagram, I really don't do at all. I have an account, and you know, I use it to kind of keep up with my friends. It's more of a personal thing, um, and it's and it's public. But I really don't post a whole lot. Um, sometimes I'll post some stories. I think I, I always have this opinion that like. Social media is, and I, and I totally get social media. You know, I get why people in our industry use it, and I respect everybody that, you know, a lot of people use it as their entire career, you know? Um, and that's how they, they, they make their money, and I, I respect that, and I think it's incredible that people are able to do that. Um, I think, like, the initial goal behind social media was really noble, you know? This idea of, like, connecting people around the world and being able to keep up with each other. I mean, Facebook came out when I was in college, and it was, you know, it was really the coolest thing ever. I mean, it was like, okay, wow, my friends in Florida can post pictures, and I can see them, and, you know, you, you keep up with people that you hadn't, you know, kept up with in a long time. So there was this really noble goal behind it, um, and it's just kind of evolved in a way where I feel like the, the negative externalities are kind of so bad now that it's just, it's kind of wiped out that initial noble goal. And, you know, I think we spend too much time on our, on our devices anyway. Um, and, you know, the danger of, of Instagram is, is kind of the, the grass is always greener effect, you know, where you see people living their lives and you think, I'm, I mean, and I, I do it as well. I see people living their lives and I'm like, oh my gosh, why don't I have that? Why don't I own that home? Why am I not on that vacation? Why don't you know? Why don't I have abs that look like that? Um, and you just start comparing yourself, I think, to to everything else that's that's, that's out there. And I don't know. I think it can be really really harmful as far as just yeah. your psychology goes. So it can be dangerous for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think look, there's everything in moderation, right? Yeah. So as long as you're aware of of what you're there for and and using it for the right reasons, I think that's I think that's great. Um, but yeah, personally, I just choose to, I don't know do other things instead. And believe me, I've gotten into very, very strong arguments with a lot of people that you know represent me and, and they say, well, if you had more followers, if you were doing more on social media, you could be doing so much more in your career. And I'm always just kind of like, eh? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. I go in with like a list of like all the actors that don't use Instagram and I'm like, well, if this person can do it, so can I. Yeah. Brad Pitt doesn't have Instagram, so DiCaprio. Why do we, yeah, DiCaprio yeah. doesn't have Instagram. Why do I need it? Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, I, I totally respect people that do it. It's just it's just one of the things that doesn't doesn't particularly interest me. So right, it is kind of sick, right? That people even in modeling and acting and things like that, they're getting hired because of their follower count and their likes, right? Yeah, yeah, and I'm never. I mean, look, I never begrudge anybody for how they go about getting a job in this business. I mean, this is you know, this is a hard business, you guys. It's 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 so challenging and and to be able to get a job any way you can, respect, you know? If you use Instagram and social media and that gets you a part in a movie, amazing. Sure. And and look, if you're good, I, that, that's what I always think. Like, if you're good and you're talented, then you will find a way to, to make use of that. So if you're a great actor and you happen to get a job because you're popular on Instagram, yeah. 
well then great, you know, the world found you and the industry found you. And there's a lot of people who get that first job on, on a movie or TV show because of their social media and then they're not great and they kind of fade out of view, you know? So I think it, I think it works itself out. You know, the people that work hard kind of work their way to the top and um, all the other stuff is just kind of sideshows. Totally. Yeah. So have the followers, but do us a favor and just be talented. That's <laughs> yeah, all we ask. Yeah. Or at least work that's fair. or at least work hard, you know? That's <laughs> that's, that's all that really matters. Very fair. Yeah. Well, we're gonna take it to, I have one more question, but then we're gonna let you guys uh, go to the microphones. One, two, three, and four. I see some very eager people with questions. That's oh, fantastic. Goodness. Do it. But I will ask this just from you guys, uh, just a little bit of behind the scenes insight. So we have a lot of aspiring actors that are here in Liverpool that have been asking questions. What is your advice? I'll start with you, Summer, then I'll go to you. Uh, uh, for young actors wanting to get into the business, any advice for them? I would say, this is going to sound really lame, but honestly, just be yourself and don't do it if that's like not your passion. Because I've known a lot of my friends, um, I've just heard a lot of stories just about how people feel like, oh yeah, that'd be cool to do, but it's not their passion. And like Stephen said earlier, that this is a very hard business for all ages. It does not matter who your mommy and daddy are. It does not matter where you live. It does not matter who you are necessarily, honestly, that doesn't even matter. Uh, what really matters in the end is if you fit that puzzle piece. So I would just say that if you're, if you want to do acting, you need to do it, like, you need to commit yourself to it. And that doesn't mean that you're just like, okay, well, acting's my God now, I worship my acting God, but you do, you do, you have to do your very best in order to make it, so, yeah. Good advice. When does your book come out? Yeah. Oh my god. I already have a book. Oh my god. Oh, I wish I was this smart when I was 13 years old. Are you kidding me? It's homeschool, dude. It's homeschool. Seriously. Oh, I'm so mad at my parents for not homeschooling me right now. That was incredible. You read a lot, don't you? I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate that. You're like really smart. So smart. Really. Um I, I I don't think I don't think my advice is that much different other than um uh I, I did read this. This quote has always stuck with me. Um, I was listening to a podcast once, and and I heard the founder of. Uh, do you guys have Five Hour Energy in the UK? The little like shots of of energy. Yeah. No. Maybe not. It's. I, I mean, it's all over the world, but there's a million knockoffs now. Anyway, the guy that created um, that Five Hour Energy brand said that passion can be fleeting, but determination isn't. So um, that always stuck with me. Where I think you can have a passion for something. And, you know, there are some weeks when I hate acting, you know, there will be weeks that go by where I'm like, oh, this industry sucks. Like, yeah. I don't want to go to acting class. I don't want to show up to set. Um, you know, I'm just not having a great time. But if you stay determined and you, you know what your end goal is, then I think that's kind of the most important part. You know, you get knocked down, you get back up. Um, so that's number one. And then number two is just study and train. Um, you know, it's funny being in the UK, if you talk to a lot of American actors, they have this weird resentment towards British actors um, because there's this idea that like British actors come over and steal all of our roles oh. <laughs> as Americans. Yeah, they took our jobs, right, yes. Why are they casting a British person to play an American person? <laughs> well, because they're better than you, <laughs> you know? Like, that's truly what I think. And it's because, it's because I think that, you know, actors over here, you guys, for anybody that wants to be an actor, you all start training so young, you know? Case in point. Um, but summer's a rarity in, in America. You know, a lot of people, um, honestly, myself included, even though I acted a little bit when I was a kid, you you know, people decide to move to L.A. one day and become an actor, you know? Right, right. It's, it's like you're going to be at Starbucks and you get approached. Yeah, and right, exactly. Recognize. And so people start, you know, they start learning acting when they're in their 20s or whatever, and then they expect to, you know, and, you, and, and then we've got people in the U.K. who they start training as actors when they're four or five years old, and they go through all of it, you know, voice training, body, movement, all that stuff, and then it's a wonder why they're, they're so talented and so skilled and why they're taking all of our jobs. Um, so, you know, I, I respect the hell out of that. And I think, yeah, if you're going to be an actor, just, just study and train and, and become really, really good at your craft. And then there's really no way to, to fail at that point. No, great advice. Do your research. Thank you for that. We've got a question over here at microphone number one. Hello. Hi. Um, who, if, who was the funnest to work with on the set of originals? <laughs> here you go. Okay. Well... I would say that if you guys haven't seen it yet, you need to go to my Instagram. You need to scroll back like many years. I think it's on YouTube too. Me and Joseph did the funniest skits in the entire world. 
comedy approved. Uh, we probably were late for a couple of scenes because of them, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Okay, and it's a good laugh. Go watch it. Uh, really funny. So, yeah, I would say Joseph was really, really funny to work with. Joseph was great. Joseph was really good at, at being very, very serious as Klaus, and then as soon as the cameras cut, he would like slap you in the face or like cut a joke or something like that. Um, it was amazing. I, I had a great time with Charles. Obviously, I worked with, with Charles um, quite a bit. And we, we had this fun game with each other where we would, right before they called action, we would like whisper in the other person's ear um, inspiration for that particular take, you know? So like it would have nothing to do with the actual scene we were shooting. It would be like, I want to see a little bit of... Um, Tom Cruise from Top Gun in this take, you know, just like mess with him and throw him off. Or uh, I'd like to see a little bit of, uh, of Denzel Washington in this take, you know. Um, so we, we messed around with each other quite a bit, but I think everybody on set was honestly... Everybody was so funny. Yeah. Like, I can't see, I can't think of one stone cold person. Like, nobody was like that one kid in the corner with a hoodie. Like, right, no. right, Everybody yeah. was so funny. We all got along. We had a, we yeah. had a rocking good time fun. for sure. Yeah, good. Good to know. We've got uh, a question over here at microphone number two. Hello. Microphone two, sorry, just one second. Um, I just want to say I love you guys so much, and Thank my you. question is, if you could be any character on the show, what character would you be and why? I mean, like, any, like, supernatural character. Any, sh any like, on the originals? Yeah. Okay. Like, if you could, like, be, like, any supernatural character, like, a different one than what you already are. I think I, somebody asked me this earlier, and I said Marcel. I wanted to be Marcel because by the end he was by he was by far the most powerful. That was kind of great. Okay, so <laughs> this is hard for me to like say. Um, you can say Josh; it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and I know she. I technically was already kind of okay. The Hollow. Okay, you know why? Because. First of all, the hollow was something that everybody was focused on at the time. It controlled everybody's lives. And I just think it'd be really fun to play like a whole villain. And I know it was like partly the villain, but I've never played like a real villain before. So I feel like it would be really fun. But obviously like she dies, best. which is yeah. great. She like goes into everybody's souls. It's not <laughs> it's not it's not a great, great happy ending, but I feel like a villain would just be really fun to like yeah, play full time. Are the best for sure. Good to be bad. I get it. We've got a question all the way up here at microphone number three on the left. Hi, Ed. Hi. Um, what was your favorite episode to film? Ooh, okay. Would you like to start? No, you go. I need to think. <laughs> okay. So we cut out this take, I'm pretty sure, because... Well, no, actually, no, we didn't cut out this take. Yes, we didn't. Okay. All right. So... Uh, me and Joseph were sitting at this table, and he had, like, this full thing of, like, pastries, like, sitting right in front of me. And all I have to say is that what that episode in general was so fun to play because most of the time I was eating cupcakes and cookies. It was, like, the best thing ever for, like, a 7- and 8-year-old. Like, it was a great day. So, yeah, that that's definitely 100%. I think mine would probably be my my very last episode, the episode that I died in, just because it was it was you know it was so nice to culminate five years on on this show, um, and you know everybody knew that it was it was my death, and so it was just like a great atmosphere, you know, to have everybody around kind of celebrating um, the end of the end of Josh, the demise of Josh. of Josh, and of course Aiden came back for uh, for a hot second as well, which was really fun. We've got a question up here at microphone four on the right. Um, what is one plot you would have wanted to change or add in the show? I mean, I, I probably would have kept myself alive if I could, if I could change one, you know, and then had a spinoff called, um, called Just Josh. <laughs> that's, I'm actually not joking. That's, that's exactly what I would have done. Yep, Josh stays alive, everybody else dies, and then, um, and then we follow just Josh, and like all of a sudden now he's the original vampire, um, just running around New Orleans, you know, Great. going to nightclubs and, uh, and meeting just guys. Josh. Sounds lovely. Yeah, that, that does sound great. Um, sounds well. Let me know when you uh, work that out. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, honestly, I wouldn't have changed a lot, but I would have say that I wish that like hope at the very last episode of season four I wish she got like a proper goodbye with Klaus because she didn't get a proper goodbye and I know that would have been sappy and kind of stupid looking but honestly I just think it was pretty sad you know so I think I wish that you know 
hope it has gotten to say goodbye. Yeah, that would have been sweet. Oh. We've got a question here at microphone two on the right. Hiya. Hiya. Um, Hi. My question is, is there any like actors or authors that you really look up to um, that inspire you to like, do your work and stuff? Oh, well, definitely, yeah. I mean, look at him. Are you pointing at me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to turn around, no, but I figured fine. you were pointing at me. You know? <laughs> it's lovely. Um, I'm never really a super starstruck with anybody. I'm never, like, drop to the floor, dive an asthma attack kind of person with that kind of stuff. But I would say that I really look up to Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, Same. people like that. I mean, look at their careers. Look at their careers. So, yeah, they definitely inspire me. I've enjoyed many of their movies. Just watch the Titanic on We'll Never Go on a Large Ship. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of great people like them that I look up to. Um, I always, my, t two of my favorite actors are, uh, are Philip Seymour Hoffman, um, who, who passed away long, long, long before his due time, and, um, and Joaquin Phoenix. Those are, those are two actors that I really look up to just as, as artists. Um, and unfortunately, I think both of them have quite a few personal demons. Um, but yeah, I, uh, and then I would, I would trade lives with Meryl Streep like, like in a heartbeat. I would become Meryl Streep, no problem. Good choices. We're going to go to microphone number one here on the left. Hi. Hi, my name's Jessica, and my question is, with the fans, what was, like, your weirdest or best or most memorable interaction? It could have been here or anywhere else. Uh, I actually know that one right off the top of my head. Um, Charles and I, for whatever reason, I think, it, like, after season three or four, I think we were doing a convention, actually, in Orlando, Florida, and, um, and we decided to go to Disney World. Um, <laughs> Because why not? Did you get some uh, ears? It, yeah, yeah. Well, we've, we've, we encountered some fans, and they asked us to take a picture with um, some Mickey Mouse ears. And uh, regrettably, I think that photo still exists somewhere on well, the we internet. We have it. It's actually right here. We'll oh, there we, and we have, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Charles and I wearing Mickey Mouse ears at, uh, at Disney World, is, uh, yeah, that, that was probably the best fan interaction I've ever had. I would say I haven't had a lot of bad fan encounters. I would say the best one I would say is the one that almost like made me cry is this girl. I was in a convention, I forget exactly, I think New Jersey, and she took her phone case off and she gave me her phone and she let me sign it while she was like bawling. And I was like, okay, well, Summer, you better have a steady hand here because you can't redo this with a Sharpie. <laughs> so, yeah, that was just really sweet. She was, like, crying and thanking me, and I was, like, my 10-year-old self was just, like, wow, okay, I'm going to just remember this forever because she was just so sweet, and it was, like, wow, I don't deserve people. <laughs> We're going to go to microphone three up at the top left. Hi, um, can I just say I love you guys? Well, thank um, you. But also, if you had to kill one person off the cast, who would it be? Wow, I like how you started with, I love you, but... <laughs> who would you murder? <laughs> who would you murder? Can the, can the manner murder? of murder be anything we want? Yeah, a little bludgeoning, a oh, yeah. little shooting. Um, man, if I had to kill one person off the cast... <laughs> Maybe probably Nathaniel Bizalik. <laughs> oh, this will go viral. I'm gonna get a text from him in about four minutes. Um, <laughs> Nathaniel, yeah, Nathaniel Bizalik, that guy. Um, I mean, I I love him. He's he's such a sweetheart. But uh, we <laughs> we would have like crying competitions on set sometimes, where it's just like we're randomly when no, when the other person wasn't expecting it, like tap the person on the shoulder. Three, two, one, cry. And then we both just like try to cry as quickly as we could, and whoever cried first won, and the other person didn't get to eat lunch. <laughs> wow, that's that's Yeah, it was legal. brutal. It was brutal. We had to entertain ourselves somehow, long days on set. But yeah, I'm going to say Nathaniel Bizalik. Um, ah, this is so hard. That's a good question, though. Summer's way too nice to answer this question, by the way. <laughs> way too nice. I, I, would, um, I would kill off one of the extras. <laughs> What what did they do to deserve that? Well, you know in that scene where I snapped my mom's neck? Uh -huh. So basically, you know, the little girl that screamed, you know, she really got on my nerves. So, yeah, her. Okay, there bye. we go. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> she said bye. Damn. Uh, <laughs> bye. Summer Fontana is cutthroat. That's savage. Did not, no. I'm going to scoot over just a, just a tad. I know. A microphone could be so sharp. Jeez. <laughs> Hashtag savage summer over Oof. here. 
We have a question all the way up at the top. Uh, microphone number four on the right. Hiya. Hi. Um, Hi. What was your favorite line to say at the show? I'm seven, not stupid. That was so easy. I'm seven, not stupid. <laughs> was that one of your lines? Yes, it is. Um, that was one of the most savage lines. We were talking about it all episode. We were like, yeah, this is the best line ever. So thank you to the writers for that one, honestly. That's that's pretty good. Um, oh, gosh. I don't remember. You know what? There was something, I, I think, I, it, there was one that I, I had, like, a really sweet moment with Colin Waddell in, in season two towards the end of that season when I think I, I said something to him, like, you're, you're my pack now or something like that. Um, and I, I just remember that being a really sweet moment with Colin. Colin was only there for one season, but... Um, we had a really good time, and and he and I are buddies in in real life now. Um, and I I just remember that being like kind of a culmination of like a really fun storyline that Josh and Naden both had. So that one sticks out in my mind. We've got a question here at microphone number two. Hi, um, my question is, um, who do you think didn't deserve to die or deserved better? Josh, guys, the answer is always Josh. He did not deserve to die. Um, I don't know. Maybe Klaus and Elijah. No, they, sh they both deserve to die. Klaus and Elijah both deserve to die. Yeah, yeah. They're not, they're not great people. I don't think Haley deserved to die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We should have kept, kept Haley alive. She was better. She was such uh, a great mom. I know. That was messed up. Yeah, we hold that little kiss thing. I was just like so pure. Like they just took it away from me. Yeah, that was messed up for sure. We should we should have written this show. We should just Josh. Probably would have been better. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, it would make sense. No plot holes whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> just Josh. We've got a question here at microphone number one. Um. Hi. My question is: Do you think Klaus is a good dad? <laughs> you know. Dad. He wasn't a good dad to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he did slice a few throats that I don't think deserve to die. You know. But I do think that he overall was a, a great dad. I mean, he painted with me. He bought me cupcakes. He was just an overall a really great dad. I mean, honestly, I could see in our spinoff, obviously, you could kind of see him, you know, at the music at the music park holding my cotton candy while I ride a ride. It would be just really pure and wholesome. So, yeah, I would definitely say Klaus was a good dad. Yeah, he never killed anybody in front of you. No, at least he shielded my eyes. I had, like, yeah. a special eye cover he gave me. Waited until you went to bed. Yeah. Right, right. That's polite. Yeah. Good. So yeah. Good times. We have a question up at the top left, uh, microphone number three. Hi. I just want to say thank you for coming to the UK because I know it's really far away. <laughs> but Atlantic Ocean, not a big deal. Um, if you could have one superpower in real life from the Vampire Diaries or the originals, which one would it be and why? You know, you know that one, I don't, what is it called? Like, you stand up, and, like, you can just, like, go, like, whoosh, like. Oh, yeah, we called that? it vamping. Yeah, vamping. I don't know why we called it that. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Where, they, where you, like, run, they, like, move really fast. Yeah, I would love to do that, because I would love to, like, scare the crap out of my friends every time I see them. I'd just be like, hi. So, yeah, definitely vamping. That would be, like, the best ever. That was so dumb. <laughs> oh, my God. Especially when we, especially when you, when you had to shoot that, you guys, you guys all know what I'm talking about. Where it was like vampires can move really fast, right? It's like they yeah, shoot yeah, across the would, room, yeah. and it was like, the it blur. was like anytime we had to film one of those, I'll the way they, the, the way they did it basically was like everybody else froze, nobody moved, and then like you just walked at a normal pace across the room. <laughs> And then they, and then in post production in the editing room, they just like speed it up. <laughs> it was like, but like when you're actually on set and everybody, they're like, everyone freeze, and you're just like, me, I go. <laughs> it's like this is so ridiculous. Um, uh, I, cool. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to. I don't think I'd want to do that. I don't. I wouldn't want the supersonic hearing either because I don't want to hear what people are saying about no. me. You know, no. that's just that doesn't sound fun. I could like. You know, I could like hear all the whispers you guys are talking about right now. Like, I wish this guy would just shut the fuck up and stop talking. Um, I'm gonna go with outside of the originals and vampires. I would like to be able to fly. I was gonna that's, say that. Yeah, but that's what I, I, I answered the question. I know. I, I, I went question. rogue. Sorry about that. <laughs> we got a question up at the top right, microphone number four. Hi. Um. So, other than Klaus, who is your favorite Michelson sibling? Freya. Yeah, Freya I agree, was, Freya. Freya was great. I mean, her style. Like, let's just look at her clothing, for example. Like, can you beat that? Like, her style was supreme. 
pretty nice. She always kind of like tried to help the family because yeah. the family was always like sucking. So and I feel like you know, this is gonna make us for us. You know, yeah. kind of making fun of Riley earlier. Yeah. For well, we like Freya. Right. They're different yeah. people. Oh, that's so. true. Yeah, we like right. Freya, not Riley. Sorry, right. I'm forgetting. Yeah. yeah, don't forget that. Yeah, Freya yeah. for sure. Right now, so yeah, definitely Freya. You redeemed yourself, I think. Eh, yeah, we're working <laughs> on it. <laughs> we got a question at microphone number two on the right. Hi, Summer. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Love both your characters. Thank you. Um, Summer, you had a really good. Well, what we've seen on IG when. Um, Joseph posted him. You seem to have a really good relationship with him. Now, he's, Joseph has just had his 41st birthday on the 16th of May, and he's filming at the moment in Toronto doing DC Titans season four. He's going to be the big bad, um, Brother Blood. Have you got any words? How do you with... know all of this? Oh, because I follow him very, very closely. <laughs> so, um, like I say, he's filming out in uh, Toronto at the moment. Have you any words of encouragement for him in DC Titans? I would just say for he's a amazing actor, amazing person. So, I mean, honestly, good for him. And definitely miss seeing him. Hope to reunite very soon. And very proud of him. Very proud of the great strides he's making. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not that proud of him. He's he hasn't he hasn't like won an Oscar and an Emmy yet, you know. I don't know why. It's yeah, because like, Josh has. Obviously. It's like get to the well. I'm never gonna win one, but you know, Joe. It's like come on, buddy, let's go, let's hurry up. All the stuff I was talking about earlier with British actors being so much better than us. Like, hello, Joseph, let's go. Yeah, um, step it up, step up your game. <laughs> I forgot to text him on his birthday, um, so we'll see if he texts me on my birthday this coming week. I, I don't think he will. Um, Are you like 21, if, 22? But if he, yeah, 21. Um, uh, but if he does, then I'm going to feel really, really bad. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to text him on my birthday and say happy birthday and just see if he says it back. I'll say happy belated birthday. So sorry I missed it last week and see if he says it back. That's actually great. I'm going to do that. he just says, like, thanks. That's, uh, that's, what's, thanks. that's exactly what's going to happen. Believe me. Yeah, yeah. He has no idea. <laughs> yeah. Or he'll just, like, he'll just, like, heart the yeah. the text you won't even he won't even reply <laughs> i love that i love that i message made that because like honestly don't like talking to a lot of people in my contacts <laughs> so it's like so great like thank you for letting me do you have that i'm always so offended if somebody just like hearts it or like thumbs up my text i'm like no you can't send me a text back you know what hurts is when they do the down emoji like the thumbs down like that hurts more than like flipping person off like if you just do like a the like a i don't think i've ever gotten the down emoji yeah, I've never gotten the, you know, middle finger either. Thankfully, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not anytime soon. We're going to go to microphone number one with a question right over here on the left. Hi, I just wanted to ask, what do you think was the saddest death? What? Come on, guys. You really have to ask that? Guys, come on. We, we know. We know. I would say, yeah, Haley Klaus. Haley Klaus, yeah, Haley Klaus. Both of them. <coughs> <laughs> well, not you. Everybody this was. This is cool. awkward. Like, everybody was making a party when you died, though. Like everybody. Yeah, was... that's true. We finally got this guy off the show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I thought Haley's death was actually pretty sad as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I don't think I also don't think anybody really saw Haley's death coming. You know. No. I think she was one of the one of the surprises. Um. And I remember being on set the day that she that she that she died as well, and it was a really good scene. Yeah. She didn't say you. That was almost like giving him the thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what that stings was. Stings a bit. Stings in person <laughs> even more. Whoa. <laughs> We're going to go up to the top at microphone three on the left. Uh, okay. Uh, hi. Uh, so I was just wondering, you know when you like have to act, but you have to put a different accent on, how exactly do you do that? I don't know. How do I? I don't know. Do I've, actually, I've never done an accent, so I'm not entirely sure. You know, honestly, I'm Summer really... give me some lessons. I'm really good at a southern accent. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm also really yeah, good I can do southern at, accent, too. I, I like to think I'm decent at a British accent. I probably sound like a knockoff Hermione Granger when I do it, but... Don't do it here. This is the wrong place to test it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, nope. Honestly, the southern accent, I think, is the best. Honestly, I just go on YouTube, and I Google, like, how to do a German northern accent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one YouTube's time I had to handy. do, like, a Minnesota one. That was kind of hard. 
it's kind of funny because the overseas ones are easier than the ones in America. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, I would uh, I would say it's really fun for me, but I honestly kind of feel like an idiot when I do it. So. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. True story. I mean, a lot of people honestly use dialect coaches. Um, the, the few times I've had to do an accent for, like, an audition or something like that, if it's something that's completely out of my range, I just, you know, you get a dialect coach, and there's a lot of them all over all over the business, and they're very talented at what they do. Yeah. yeah. We're going to go to microphone number four up at the top right. Hiya. Yeah, uh, there's questions from my daughter, but she's too shy to get up. Probably everyone. What? Where question. is she? This question is, is probably everyone wants to know in here. Where the hell is Klaus? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you mean um, Klaus or Joseph Morgan? Yeah, that's who I mean. Whoever he wants to get a pitch with, where is he? The main man, you know what I mean? Where well, was the where was the lovely woman over here? Apparently he's in Toronto. Apparently. I mean, she seems to have like a direct line to him. We she's could got probably a schedule. Yeah. we could probably call him up. I should call him right now yeah. and see if he answers the phone. <laughs> It'd be weird. Um yeah, yeah. He uh was he supposed to be here at some point? He was, he canceled, he said yeah. hate you, Steven, hate you, Summer. Hates right, yeah. Go away. Hates us. Yeah. Yeah, he and Riley were like really bitter this time around. I know. So yeah. Don't know exactly. what their problem is, but I mean it's your fault, not ours. I don't you know. <laughs> yeah, you guys scared him away. I don't know what away. you did. Yeah. No, I mean truth like uh, in in all fairness, um I know it sucks when when we have to cancel a lot of times last minute at these at these conventions. I know it sucks for you guys, and believe me, we always feel terrible about it. Um, one of the things about this business, though, is it's so unpredictable as far as like work schedules go. So you know, we you know, I planned on coming here back in November, and I had agreed to do it you know months before. Same with this one, and you just unfortunately don't know what kind of professional obligations you're going to have months out in this business, unfortunately. So. Um, a lot of times it happens, and it's like, oh, we're on set, we, you know, we can't make it, and and, and we do feel terrible. But um, bear with us, and, and trust me, anytime we have to cancel, we always try to always try to make it up by coming to the next one. Yeah. Good answer. We've got a question number uh, here at microphone number two on the right. Hello. Hi. Um, so in the Vampire Diaries panel yesterday, they were saying how weird it is that with things like you know Netflix and other streaming platforms, that there's always new people watching the show. Mm. Um, so I'm just wondering if that's something that you've experienced, like all new fans and stuff. I mean, I think it's I think it's awesome. I, I love I the idea that. that and and the other thing is I think that's why it's so important for shows to have proper endings now. Um, you know, we were very lucky on the originals that we we it was announced that it was going to be our last season. We all knew going in that it was going to be our last season. The writers and producers knew so they could they could have a proper ending to the show because the truth is when when these shows get put on Netflix and other streaming platforms, um, they're just sitting there. And when you know that a show has a proper ending, it's more likely that people are going to start watching it from the from the very beginning. You know, so I think it's amazing that that people can watch five years later and discover these shows um you know even if they didn't watch it live especially for you know people that are in different countries you know you guys didn't have the opportunity to watch live how else would you have seen it if it didn't go on on netflix so yeah i i love it i think it's amazing yeah i do not have much time left oh okay but uh yes i would agree with that i think that it's really cool to see how many diverse people from all over all different ages uh just watch the show and discover something new about it and we all have that one person from the show that we were totally obsessed with. I know it's obviously Hope because she's the best, but um, yep. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I would just say it's really cool, and I think that it's a blessing to be able to watch it like that because Netflix is my best friend. Me and my dog watch it all the time. It's a guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to streaming services, you guys will live on forever, which forever. is very apropos. Very, the, but true. That was a vampire yeah. pun if you didn't yeah, catch it. Yeah, we got it in a good one Yay. at that. Yay. Well, thank you guys so much. We're going to let them get back to the photograph and autograph area so you can meet them in person. Please Woo. give a warm round of applause to thank Steven and Summer so from fun. the Originals. Cheers. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Stephen and Summer, your originals panel right here at Comic-Con.